I love to talk with actors, directors, and producers because meanwhile, while the world is enjoying this time of the year, we are doing just that. Hustling, hustling, hustling. <laughs> And making sure that we provide the world with some fine entertainment. And our actor producer who's joining us today has done none other than just that. He just released his short film, Two Wrongs, uh, not too long ago. And then now you just dropped another film, Jamal Johnson. What is going on? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, man. Just trying to have a fantastic Christmas. Just like you said, we just released uh, Two Wrongs. It's going to be in uh, uh, 10 different countries. Um, starting next week, Just and it's going to be available. Just absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, it's going to be available. <laughs> it's going to be available um, on uh, Amazon Prime next week as well. So everybody will get the chance to check that out. So excited about that film, man! We've already been winning awards. Uh, we were nominated at the famous Soup Film Festival in Italy. We won awards in New York at the World Film Fair. We also won awards here in California. So excited about that. And also, like you said, another project that I'm working on um, that is a little bit in the wraps, but will be coming in 2019. Looking forward to it. It's a comedy, so it's a little bit different than what I'm used to, but it's called Down and Out. So uh, definitely excited about that as well. Listen, I'm excited about it. I'm glad, excited that you've taken the time out to talk to us in the live with Miss T Fam. Now, I want to get into some very interesting things about you, Jamal, because you went from playing sports to being an actor. Like, how does those two work? And like, you, you like acting is your passion. Now, you would have never yeah. thought you were a baller. <laughs> so let's talk about I, I, it. That's a great question. I think there's a lot of. Um, kind of similarities between being an athlete and an actor. Um, I always say that some actors and athletes are, are, are narcissistic in some ways. I mean, we, we uh, you know, we, we t and we like the attention and stuff. And so there is those similarities. But like you said, I, I, I was an athlete. But I can't tell you, I started off being an actor. I went to a progressive independent school. And at a young age, in elementary school, I was doing Shakespeare and um, a lot of different things and so the acting was in me but I will say as I got older I noticed that the girls weren't paying any attention to me <laughs> and, so, and so I said wait a minute what's going to make them pay attention so I started playing football and basketball okay. and so when I started playing football and basketball and got better at that I noticed that the girls started paying attention to me and I kind of put the acting when I was young you know in the back burner and I got better and better and Ended up getting a scholarship to play um, college basketball, which was amazing. And but while I was in college, I actually did some um, some commercials, some voiceovers. So the acting kind of stayed with me throughout. I did a couple you know, one act plays as well in college, and so I, acting has kind of always been a part of my life since I was young. But sports happened to integrate when I noticed that that's what the girls like. <laughs> <laughs> So that's, you know, Listen, that's I, it seems like you have a few ladies' attention this Christmas. I, I saw you you have a new baby girl, right? I do. I, I have a beautiful new uh, baby girl. she would be four months on Monday, actually. Her well, name is Bea Sky, and uh, loving her to death, and she's keeping me um, focused, so to speak. Listen, now, before we get to talking about the film, because I want to know more about Two Wrongs, it's going to be out in 10 countries just listen it next week okay but what do, i'm a new auntie okay jamal and i got i have a two month old niece and i'm trying to figure out exactly what do you get infants for christmas oh my goodness <laughs> if I, you know look, i will tell you that stockpile on pacifiers okay. I mean, people, call them, people call them binkies but i call them pacifiers because i'm old school and so but stockpile on those things and a whole bunch of uh you know, infamil, I guess, you know, it's two pets. At, at two months, your niece is not going to be sleeping whatsoever. I mean, already my, my daughter has this unusual sleep pattern that keeps me up at night, but 
you keep that pacifier or binky and infamil, you keep them nice and full, I think they'll be a little bit better. A little bit better. Thank you. I appreciate it. I need, because listen, I need all the help I can get. <laughs> I definitely do. This October, you just released a short film, Two Wrongs. Tell us yes. more about this film, because it looks like it is dealing with a person's, their own, trying to figure themselves out. Let's talk about it. Absolutely. So, Two Wrongs is, is um, basically a short film that talks, it's a story of a single father that has uh, hard times early on, trouble past, that is trying to do the right thing with his daughter. So, he, and through that, he, you know, encounters so many different hardships and tr troubles and tr tribulations, and and it's, it's really the story of everything about him making the right or wrong decision which is kind of where Two Wrongs, the name of the title, comes into play. So it, it really touches on a lot of things, what's going on in society, racial profiling, bullying, police brutality. So the story really hits home with a lot. Well, it hit, it's already hit home with a lot of people, obviously, like I said, throughout different countries because of the nominations that we received. And so I think it... It really hits your heart when you watch this short film, and it's a little short 12 minutes. So it's really impactful. Listen, it's an award-winning short film. How important do you think it is to talk about these things that are going on in our culture? I think it's extremely important because, as you know, just being an African-American, it's, it's, it's a consistent uphill battle. And so with that, we want to bring to light some of the things that we deal with. And then we also want to bring to light things, decisions, decisions that we can make that, e that either can help or hinder our future. And so I think we always need to just be aware of things that's going on in today and then also really to th allow for our youth to be aware of that as well because they're the, gen they're the next generation. And so we have to make sure that we create, like I'm, I'm using the short film and me as an actor as a platform to kind of hopefully be able to make projects that will help to showcase uh, things that will help people see us in a better light, hopefully, and also get a real understanding our struggles and our pains. Listen, that's awesome. Now let's flip the switch a little bit and talk about the TV series Down and Out. You say it's a comedy. Yeah. It looks like yeah. it's just completely <laughs> off the chain. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. So, Down and Out was created by um, a member of the Netflix editorial team, and he's also an award-winning filmmaker. He ironically wrote and directed um, Two Wrongs. Okay. Well. So that's kind of where the 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 connection comes into play. That's kind of how I was put together. I actually auditioned for this pilot before Two Wrongs that we shot. A, we shot. Um, half of the pilot before we shot Two Wrongs and Two Wrongs presented to me by this director and said, hey, I think you'll be great for this project and we ended up doing Two Wrongs. And so we're, we're kind of following along the, the Michael B. Jordan, Ryan Coogler route with okay. doing multiple projects together. And so we're excited about this. But yeah, this is a comedy. It's kind of centers around two guys who were blackballed in the industries that they love, one trying to be a music artist and one trying to be an actor and kind of the true to life stories that that happened here in the entertainment industry as they try to build themselves back up. In my role, I play a character named Brad Shaw, who plays the uh, I'm the music producer of one of the main the musician the music artists uh, on the show. So uh, I kind of channel my inner Dr. Dre, so to speak, for the okay. role. And so <laughs> <laughs> definitely, uh, definitely excited about that, man. And we had a great time shooting, and we kind of put a little teasers on online, and we've already garnered over a hundred thousand um, views we've in like a matter of days. So we're, seen, we're really excited about that as well. We've seen, we've seen, we've seen. Now you mentioned Dr. Dre. We have a thing around here when I live with this team uh, called Playlist, and we always want to know <laughs> what it is that you're listening to. What gets you up and going? Right, right. Well, you know. Ironically, to see right now my playlist, I have a different, I have a vast selection of things, man. I, I go from country, from Chris Stapleton to Jacques, Jacques to Trey Songs to uh, I was listening to some Trav Scott. Obviously, um, I had some. Uh, I don't know if you guys know about that Slim Thug. <laughs> we, know, we know a little bit about it. A little bit about it. A little bit. About it. He yeah. said, he said Jacques. So, all I can think about is him thinking he was the king of R&B. <laughs> 
<laughs> do, do you think, uh, since you mentioned, do, do you think Jacquees is the king of R&B? R&B, look, he's a talented guy, but you can't leave some of the legends out of that, uh, out of that whole conversation. And when I think of R&B music, I really think of music that I that I heard my parents growing up listening to, whether it was uh, Al Green, Smokey Robinson, Marvin Gaye, the classics, Teddy Pendergrass, and all those people. And then you know when you try, when you Transition over to a newer generation. Everybody talks about R. Kelly and and um, you know Chris Brown. I mean, yeah, there's so many people that could be included in that conversation. But I mean, Jack is talented. You know, but, but, I mean, but we all we all know that everybody. I guess he he started the conversation. Let's put it that way. Okay. He started the conversation. Well, so include. everybody kind of jumped in. And, and really started just talking about, I, me, 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 me. And so but it actually made me think about everybody. I forgot all about Jay Holiday in bed. And then when he came up and starts talking, I was like, hey, he had a hit record too. <laughs> it's like Tank had a hit record. I mean, all these people that have brought up the conversation, right. they all had hit records. So they have an opportunity to have a voice in, you know, in the same, but you cannot forget the classics. I mean, the Al Greens. I just hear my, I could just see my parents dancing in the kitchen to some Al Green. I mean, it's just, those are the classics, man. So when you, when you think of King of R&B, you got to think of those guys. <laughs> let's get back to the project. Now, let's first talk about Two Wrongs. Where can they go see the short film Two Wrongs at? So the uh, the short film will be available next Friday. What is that? The twenty uh, first, mm -hmm. um, Amazon Prime, and then as well as on Udu, uh, which is another uh, platform, as well as Vimeo, and um, there will it will be offered in several different languages. I think starting off with Spanish, Italian, uh, French, German. So. Um, and then it will expand into other languages and other countries as well because there is kind of a, a process. I signed a deal with the distributor, and, and through that, there is a process that, that before releasing the, the, um, the film in hopefully all 195 countries. So we're excited about that, and I'm excited to show, showcase the world because when you do the festival run, you only can have private screenings of it and have them view it and all that, but... This is really a short film that the world should see. And we're already, I must say, I'll, I'll let you in on a possible exclusive. We're yes, in some I love it. I love it. <laughs> Absolutely. We're in some early discussions on a possible feature film based upon the concept. So we're excited about that as well. I know you're excited about it. Now listen, I've always said everybody, everybody don't have uh, films showing in, in one country, let alone right. 10. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Let alone yeah. 10. Um, before we get out of here, we like to encourage our people and, you know, anybody who might be wanting to do the same things that you're doing, um, trying to get off the ground, trying to get started. What encouraging word would you give to the people? Well, I would definitely say um, my, my father always told me, you know, you always keep the triple, the three D's in your life, dedicated, determined, determined, and disciplined. And you, you maintain those and you continue to chase your dreams and never give up. And, and just as your song said, hustle, hustle, hustle. Every day I'm hustling. You, you got to do that, man, because you, the, the moment you feel like you're about to quit, is the moment the opportunity happens. And I would have never thought that I would have had this opportunity. I was on the brink of saying, man, I don't, I don't really know. I went, went on so many different auditions. And then it was like towards the end of, of last year is when I booked the pilot. And then after that, the opportunity was presented to me to do the short film. And now things are different. I mean, I also shot a national commercial for Pepsi. So things are really you know, really picking up, and I was really on the brink of, of, uh, of almost giving up, but just when you feel like you're about to give up is when the magic happens, and, uh, you know, that's the word to everybody. You have to continue to stay focused and stay stay learning, like you stay in class, learning on your, working on your craft and all those things, and, and any decision that you make 
to pursue in this industry. If you want to pick up the phone, call somebody, shoot an email, if you're scared, do it. Because that when you do things, then results happen. Listen, I appreciate you so much, Jamal, for taking this time out to join us here on Live with Miss T. You guys, make sure you check out Two Wrongs, available next Friday on yes. Amazon Prime, the short film, as, as well as keep a lookout for the new TV series, Down and Out. Jamal, yes. Follow Jamal on all his social media platforms. We're going to be showing you guys um, right now who's watching via Facebook Live. And, and shout out, shout out. Thank you so much. Merry Christmas to you. And, of course, if you have anything going on ever, call us live with Miss T. We got your back. We like family now. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's, and live with Miss T on DFWIRadio.com. When we get back, it's the holiday season and some single people are mad. We got to talk about coming season this 2018. Um, if you didn't get drafted, I, I got some suggestions for you for how you can keep warm and keep moving this year. It's live with Miss T on DFWIRadio.com. We'll be back.